Okay, and welcome back everyone to Funny Stuff Toys. I know it's been a really long time since I last did a video review, but today I have something really special to show you guys. This is the Bandai Primary Space Marine Intercessor from the Warhammer 40k universe. Um, I personally have been waiting for a Space Marine figure for <laughs> over a decade now, and this is no exaggeration, really a dream come true for me. Um, ever since the Dawn of War, first Dawn of War game came out, I really got into the Warhammer 40k lore, even played tabletop for a bit, but what I really wanted was, you know, an action figure representation of these um, awesome super soldiers. And now finally, in 2020, we've gotten it, we've gotten one, you know, from Bandai. So I'm just really excited to show this off to you guys. Um, so let's take a closer look at the figure. Um, so right off the bat, you can see that Bandai did a really great job with capturing the imposing presence of the Space Marine. Um, I think they captured all the proportions well and the armor just looks really great. Um, this is what a Space Marine is supposed to look like. Let's take a look at the figure from uh, some different angles here. You can see that Bandai um, did do a good job of um, putting some black shading work throughout. Also, you can see the silver and gold um, highlights are really cleanly painted. Um, and the aesthetics of this figure just look really great. Um, let's move on to articulation. Starting off at the top of the head, um, uh, we have a ball joint at the top of the neck, and that connects, I believe, to a second ball joint at the base of the neck as well, um, which allows him for a good range of expression. Um, I will say that when I first got this figure out of the box, his neck joint was really tight, so um, I had to actually put some detergent to loosen it up and you can still hear even with the detergent it's still a bit squeaky but that's already way way better than it was uh, before um, moving down he also has this um, swivel joint at the collar at the base of the neck um, which allows for some additional range moving down to his arm um, the shoulder pad is attached to the upper arm on a separate joint it's a hinge connected to a ball joint um, which allows you to um, get the shoulder pad let's see get the shoulder pad out of the way and really raise his arm off to the side so that's pretty good um, you also have a ball joint at the shoulder that connects into the torso um, which allows for a good range of motion but then you also have this butterfly joint um, which works really well, um, but then leaves a bit of a gap in the back of his shoulder. Moving down, we have the elbow joint here, and he's got pretty good range there. It's a double jointed elbow, um, which allows him to curl um, pretty high up, so that's good. Um, for the torso, you kind of have an ab crunch, but it's in the um, middle of the, um, middle of the abdomen and you can see that allows him to bend forward quite a bit and then kind of at the uh, bottom of the abdomen section where it's connected to the waist he does have a swivel there next up we have um, these kind of thigh guards which are on separate ball joints and then in the um, legs you have a thigh swivel um, and then the hips i'm not really sure what the mechanism mechanism is there because it's really well hidden but you can move forward um, about that much you can move out to the side about that much and then he also has a knee bend um, you can kind of see there's this extra bit of armor back here which like some of the bandai model kits um, it goes in a bit when you bend the knee joint um, but it doesn't go as much as you would expect and i think you can actually push it further if you look at the review um, on the fushis channel you can see that he was able to get more 
range out of that joint, but um, I didn't want to push it too much because I didn't want to break my figure. Um, going further down, you have these, they didn't, really didn't need to do this, but these cool extra joints in the lower leg armors, which allow the foot to move better side to side, and also this foot guard, and he does have a toe hinge. So let me get him posed back up to a normal position here. One second. All right. So for a figure this bulky, I think Bandai did a pretty good job with um, the articulation. Um, I will say that um, the joints um, are some of them the tolerances are a bit tight and I think they had to do that based on how bulky the figure was is so that's something that could um, potentially be improved in the in the future just making the joints a bit um, smoother um, for me the the main problem I had was around the neck where it was um, incredibly tight when I first got it out um, so next up let's look at his accessories so he doesn't come with too much um, but here you see him holding his really large Primaris um, Intercessor Assault um, Bolt Rifle. Um, I will say I, I kind of like the um, designs on the um, original Marines for the Bolt Rifles a bit better. They're a bit smaller, but I can't fault Bandai for that. Um, this is just how the Primaris Space Marines are depicted. He also comes with a combat knife, which he holds really well. It's a really cool weapon. He also has um, three sets of fists, the two um, gun holding hands that he is currently wielding. Um, he also has two fist hands as well as uh, two open hands. Okay, so not too much in the way of accessories. Um, I will say something that would have been cooler is if he came with another melee weapon or maybe a bolt pistol and also um, somewhere to store the weapons on his body would have been nice. I know they can't use magnets, but that they could, you know, have maybe a peg back here where they could store a pistol. Um, so just, that's it for accessories. Um, next up, I wanted to do some comparisons. And for the first one, I have a StarCraft Marine from NECA and don't those two just look really cool together so there's Jimmy Rayner and a Primaris Ultramarine and you know Warhammer 40k Space Marines are already big enough but if you look at the proportions of a StarCraft Marine yeah let's just say that that's not accurate but I think these two scale um, really well together and it's cool to see these two Space Marines next to each other. Next up, we also have another Space Marine from the Halo universe, um, Red Team Leader. This is the closest thing to Master Chief I have at the moment. But you can see that, I think that's probably scaled correctly. I think Space Marines are supposed to be um, anywhere from seven to eight feet tall and then primary space marines are even bigger um, so they look really cool um, together so which one do you guys think would win in a fight between these three <laughs> yeah this guy right here for sure all right And then next size size comparison, I have the a really great figure. This is the oops. The next size comparison I have is a really great figure. This is the heavy infantry Mandalorian from Hasbro. Oops. And then the presence of the Space Marine. He killed himself. <laughs> you can see. Um, the Black Series Mando is already a pretty large figure, but next to the Space Marine, the Space Marine is just so much bulkier and larger. 
that's pretty cool to see. Okay, and to wrap this review up, I would just say that this is a really awesome figure to have. It's not it's not perfect, but I think Bandai did a really great job um, capturing um, the presence of a space marine, which is the most important thing. I think what this really gets me the most excited for is everything that, that the p huge potential for this line. Um, they could do so many different space marine figures. They could do named characters. Imagine if they did like Grimaldus or Dante or Sanguinary Guard. It would just be so awesome. Please, please do a Dante or Robute Gilliman. Um, that would just be so great. And they could even eventually expand to uh, even other races like Tau or Eldar or Chaos. Um, that would be really awesome too. I know McFarlane is going to be making their own series and I'll definitely check out that line as well. And hopefully they'll be able to pump out a lot of different, um, different figures uh, pretty quickly. Um, the other thing is that I think this guy, if you didn't like the Ultramarine colors, I think you can probably customize and paint him um, pretty easily. Um, and even though this figure didn't come with a sword, if you guys have the um, NECA Terriel from Diablo, let me just show you really quick. He can actually... wield his sword. Just one second here while I do this off camera. There we go. He can actually wield his sword really well. And look at that, you have a space marine with a power sword. And that that is just so awesome. And they can do so many different weapons and they can really expand on this line. And I really hope that they do and that this isn't just going to be one single figure. Um, I have heard that Bandai are going to expand to um, different Space Marine factions, but I don't know, you know how unique apart from the paint scheme those figures will be. So anyway, this has been my review of the Bandai Primaris Space Marine. Um, this is a really awesome figure and I'm glad I finally got an action figure of a Warhammer 40k Space Marine. I can't wait for to see what else comes next. Hope you guys liked the video and thanks for watching.